This video will show you how to use SPSS to conduct a one-way between groups ANOVA. My name is Brandi Weiss. The research question that we will be investigating is, does the total selling price differ depending on the buying format listed on eBay? We have three different types of buying format, auction, buy it now, and best offer. The data that we will be using is a random sample of iPhone 4 sales listed on eBay in January 2011. In January 2011, the iPhone was only available on the AT&T network, and so these phones are restricted to legal sales on the AT&T network, no unlocked phones, no jailbroken phones. This is a random sample of 56 sales that were listed on eBay during that time frame. The independent variable is the buying format. It has three different levels, the auction, the buy it now, and best offer, or three different groups. The dependent variable is the total selling price. That is the sale price of the phone plus the shipping and handling combined together. This type of design lends itself to a one-way between groups ANOVA. So let's look at our SPSS data file. This is my SPSS data file, and there are actually two different ways that I can run this analysis using SPSS. I'll show you the first way, and then I will show you the second way. So first I need to go to Analyze. I will choose Compare Means, and then One Way ANOVA. Once I choose this, I get a pop-up box that says One Way ANOVA. Now in my list of variables that appears on the left, I am going to right click on these and choose display variable names. By default, the variable labels are, are displayed. Those are longer names. I'm going to use just the names that I have at the top of the columns to refer to these variables. So with this, I need to find my total selling price for the phones. And once I find that, that's my dependent variable. So I will select it and move it to the dependent list. Now I need to find my buying format. And specifically, I am using buy form 2 as my independent variable. So I will select that and move it over to my factors box. After that, there are a few options I want to select. So I'm going to click on the options button and this displays another pop-up screen. And under here I have several options. I like to click the box next to descriptive. That means I will get my descriptive statistics with my sample sizes, mean, standard deviations for each of my groups. Uh, I also like to check the box that is next to homogeneity of variance test. This will give me Levine's test to test that homogeneity of variance assumption that's needed in order to conduct this test. And then finally, a couple options in case my homogeneity of variance assumption is not met. I can select the Brown Foresight and Welch tests and look at those if my uh, homogeneity of variance assumption is not met. So those are options too. You don't have to select those, but I'll go ahead and select them at this time. After that, I will click on Continue and then click OK. And this is the output that I end up getting. The first piece of output that I get is this descriptives box. This contains my descriptive statistics. And what's really important of this box, and you want to make sure that you report in any manuscript, are my sample sizes for each group, my means for each group, and my standard deviations for each group. And remember that my outcome variable is the total selling price for these phones. And so my means and standard deviations, they are in the metric of dollars, US dollars. After I look at my descriptive statistics, the homogeneity of variance test box appears. This has Levine's test. And what I want to look at here is my p-value. This falls under the sig value of 0.751. This is not statistically significant. And so what this means is that uh, my variances are not statistically significantly different from one another. They're not heterogeneous. This means that they are homogeneous. They are approximately the same. They are statistically significantly the same. So in this case, my homogeneity of variance assumption has been met. After that, I find where uh, the answer to my actual research question, and it's in this ANOVA table. When I look here under the between groups line, I see an F ratio value of 8.435, and it has a p-value of 0.001 associated with it. 
This is less than my alpha value of 0.05, and that means I have a statistically significant result. What this tells me is that the difference between the average selling price, the total selling price of these phones differs between at least two different buying formats. I don't know which two buying formats or which buying formats differ at this particular point in time. I need to conduct some type of follow-up test to answer that question, but I know the buying format differs between at least two. The final piece of output that I see says robust test of equality of means. This has my Welch test and my Brown Foresight test. So if that homogeneity of variance assumption was not met, I could go ahead and report the results for one of these two tests instead of my ANOVA test. Let me show you the second way that I can run this ANOVA analysis in SPSS. And this is going to give you an extra piece of information. To run this, I would go to Analyze and this time choose general linear model and univariate. This is the pop-up screen that I get in this particular case. And this, this method is nice if you're running factorial ANOVAs, if you have random factors, if you have covariates that you want to include in your analysis. In this case, again, I'm going to right click on my list of variables and choose vari display variable names. Here I will go and find my total selling price of the phones and move that to my dependent variable box again. And then I will find the buying format and move that to my fixed factors box. After this, I would like to click on options as there are a few options I want. I like to display the descriptive statistics again for each of my groups separately. The homogeneity test box will give me Levine's test. And then finally, what's new to this type of analysis or this method of running this analysis is if I were to click on estimates of effect size. This is going to provide you with the partial eta squared value in your SPSS output. And so this is the only way that I can get that partial eta squared estimate in my SPSS output. So I'll click on continue and OK and my output should appear. And notice that the output, it contains the same information that it did the previous way I ran this analysis, but it's just displayed a little bit differently. Uh, so what I have in this output is my between subjects factors box. So this just contains my sample sizes for each of my groups. Below that is my descriptive statistics, and that's because I checked that box and asked for this. This contains mean standard deviations and sample sizes for each group. After that, I have Levine's test. This tests my homogeneity of variance assumption. And notice how the p-value of 0.751, that is the same p-value that I received earlier when I ran this analysis. So again, I conclude that my variances are equal. This assumption has been met. Finally, the test of between subjects effects, what this gives me is the overall ANOVA test. And so if I look at my independent variable, and I've called that by form 2, when I look across, notice that my F value of 8.435 is the same as it was before, and my P value is 0 0.001. What's unique to this method of running the analysis is that I get this partial eta squared estimate of 0.241. So now that I know that at least the buying format between at least two of my groups is statistically significantly different, I need to figure out which groups are statistically significantly different from one another. And so the appropriate method of testing for this would be to use some type of post hoc test or plant comparison.